Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm really happy you enjoyed last week's review of the R5 so much and if you haven't seen that, make sure to check it out after watching this video. When you buy a camera like the R5, it comes basically with endless ways and options to customize it. And some little tweaks can have a big impact. For instance, setting up the way the autofocus works can either make the camera really great to use or kind of difficult to use. So it's actually important that you look through the menu, find the customization that you need and want, and then set it up the right way so you get the absolute most out of the camera. And that's exactly what I want to do today. I want to share with you the settings that I've found to be working the best so far. Whenever I set up a new camera, I'm basically looking for two things. I want to get the best possible results and I want to gain a lot of control over the functions of the camera. I'm not the biggest fan of using a lot of automatic modes simply because then you're leaving a lot of guesswork up to the camera. And while a camera like this is very good at guessing the right settings and doing the right things at the right time, there will often be times where the camera just simply interprets a scene different to you and you end up with pictures that could have been better if you had done it manually. So what was I looking for when I got this camera in particular? First of all, I wanted to set up back button autofocusing. That's simply because I really enjoy using that and I think it's the best way to use the camera. I've also made a video on back button autofocusing if you're interested in that. And little did I know with this camera, I actually ended up using double back button autofocusing. What I also wanted to do is to find one button that allows me to switch from photo mode to standby video mode. In my review video, I said I hadn't found that option yet, but one of you shared how I can do that in the comments. So I'm very thankful for that. And I will set that up and show you how you can do that. When I get a new camera, I also want to assign certain video modes to the custom shooting mode. And then generally what I'm also looking for is to turn off any sort of noise reduction HDR in the camera, because usually that doesn't matter for raw shooting anyways. And often it just slows down the camera unnecessarily. What I found with this camera as well, the Q button and then the touch screen at the back actually allow you to really nicely make a lot of the changes just on the back of the camera. So that's pretty good. So the first couple of things I usually change in the red menu is that I go to color space and set it to Adobe RGB because my whole workflow is in Adobe RGB. So I like to have selected that in camera already. And then I'm also changing the picture style. If you're shooting raw, the picture style doesn't actually affect your images because the raw converter will actually affect the look of the images and not the picture style. However, if you're selecting a picture style, it does affect what the preview of the images on the back of your camera look like. So for me personally, I like to set it to standard and increase the sharpness a little bit simply because that allows me to just judge the images best on the back of the camera. This might be a little bit different for you, but it might be worth trialing around with that a little bit. If you set it to neutral, for instance, I find it harder to judge the images because they sometimes look a tad flat and very soft. So then I feel like if I go to standard and increase the sharpness a little bit, it just allows me to get a better idea of what the image will likely look like when I open it up on the computer. Another thing I changed in the red menu that was quite important is we have our shutter mode here where we can switch from the mechanical shutter to the electronic shutter. So far I haven't really used the electronic shutter yet because I thought the mechanical shutter is fast enough so far and it doesn't come with the downside of potentially having rolling shutter or slightly worse of all image qualities. And then there's one little menu item hidden right at the bottom of that red shooting menu and it says shooting info display. And that actually allows you to completely customize what the rear screen and your EVF look like. And I could leave the items in the viewfinder that I liked and removed all the ones that I didn't like. So that was very helpful. The first one is the screen info settings. That simply shows you how many modes you can toggle through when clicking the info button. So I left that with all the modes, because sometimes they can all be quite handy. If you press info, you can now decide what you actually want to have displayed on your rear screen when you're in mode three. 
For the rear screen, I just left it as is because I like to have a lot of the information on the rear screen. If we're going now to the viewfinder settings, that's where I made changes. So I left the three different options in the viewfinder as well, but I customized mod three because I really wanted to have the histogram inside my viewfinder because that will really help me to not having to take test shots anymore. But what I didn't want to have in the viewfinder is that electronic level. I could just go into the viewfinder settings, go to setting three, press info, and then I could take that on and off. So I made sure that I unticked electronic level and then I had my viewfinder nice and clean with the histogram without the electronic level. I turned on the vertical display and then I set the histogram to brightness because obviously that's what we want to know when shooting. And then I also made sure that I set the histogram display size too small. When I set it too large, it just felt like it took up too much of my viewfinder and distracted me from shooting, where setting it to small worked really perfectly. There's another couple of things that I turned off as well. One thing is the image review. You definitely want to turn off the image review in your viewfinder because it simply makes your viewfinder freeze and it's really not useful at all, at least not for nature photography. So I turned that off in my viewfinder and to save battery, I also turned off the image review on the rear screen. And then I also enabled the exposure simulation, which is pretty cool because you can see in your viewfinder how bright or dark your image is. The only problem is that if you're severely underexposing or overexposing, it might be a little bit difficult to use the viewfinder then. So in that case, you might want to turn off the exposure simulation. But overall, I thought that was a pretty handy thing to have because you're always aware whether you're like shooting really dark or really bright. So it should help you to maintain good exposure at all times. And then lastly, there's just one more thing you want to change in the red shooting menu and that is setting the display performance to smooth. That will increase the frame rate of your display, making it much smoother to look through the viewfinder when you're panning along, for instance. The only downside with that is that it will use up a lot more battery, but I think it's a worthwhile trade-off. So this brings us to the pink menu and possibly the most important and most exciting menu, the autofocusing menu. I know by now you would have all heard about that amazing animal eye detection autofocus, but how can you actually set it up? And how have I set it up to get the absolute most out of it? Because initially I found it a little bit tricky to use, but now I find it absolutely amazing. So let me show you first how you can set it up in the fully automatic mode, and then I will show you how I've set it up personally to get even more usability and functions out of it. So to set up the fully automatic animal eye detection autofocus, you go to your autofocusing menu, and then you go to AF method, and you set it to face detection and tracking. The next thing you wanna go, you wanna go to subject to detect and select animals. The only important thing when you're selecting animals is that you remember to switch back if you end up shooting people, for instance, or if you have it set to people and shoot animals, make sure to set it back to animals. If you're shooting the wrong subject with the wrong mode, the camera will really struggle and you think it's not really working when in fact, it's just trying to detect something that's not in your viewfinder. So it's important that you set it up to the right target. And from there, you wanna set it to eye detection and to enable. And that's your animal eye detection autofocus enabled. If you're using the fully automatic mode, there's one more function that I would recommend using. We go to the last tab and in the last autofocus tab, we select initial servo autofocus point for face tracking. So what does that do? In the normal animal eye detection autofocus mode in the viewfinder, there's no autofocus field kind of visible. You just see all those blue fields jumping all over the screen trying to find the bird or whatever you want to focus on. But I found that in the full auto mode, just not really nice to use. So if you select this setting that we just spoke about, it will give you one autofocus point that you can kind of use to direct the camera into the right direction of what you want to be focusing on. And that's something that I found very helpful. When I only had the animal eye detection autofocus activated, I felt a little bit lost at times because the focus would focus on something in the bottom corner or I didn't have the ability to pre-focus on my perch, for instance, because the animal eye detection autofocus doesn't really know what the perch is. So if I try to focus on the perch, it might look for a leaf in the background or something else. So it was kind of a little bit annoying to use 
without having the ability to focus on something that I really wanted to focus on. And also in general, I felt like while the animal eye detection autofocus is amazing, there would be situations where normal autofocus might be superior because I can simply force the camera to focus on something that I really want to focus on. Or there might be times where the animal eye detection autofocus can't detect a bird. And then I don't want to be stuck with it and just see blue fields jumping all over my screen, missing the shot. In those cases, I wanted to be able to use the normal autofocus and quickly focus on what I actually wanted to focus on. So in order to do that, I needed to find a way to set the camera to normal autofocus and eye detection autofocus at the same time. I can make this work by assigning different function and different autofocusing methods to different buttons on the back of the camera. So let's jump in and do that. So first of all, we now have to jump back to the autofocus menu and take off and change the autofocus method. And I change it from the face tracking to spot autofocus. What does that do? Now, my base focusing method in this camera is the normal autofocus and it's set to spot autofocus. So there's just one tiny field that I can move all over the viewfinder and whenever I focus, the camera will focus exactly on that point I've focused on. So that's the ability that I really wanted to be able to focus on whatever I want at whatever point in time. However, now, the way it's set up right now, I can't use the animal eye detection autofocus. But as we all know, it's an amazing feature, so I need to be able to do that. So for that, we have to jump to the orange custom functions menu and tap three, and then go to customize buttons. Like with all back button autofocusing here, we also have to remove the focusing functionality from the front shutter button. So the front shutter button will, from now on, only take images. How do we do that? We go to shutter button and then we select metering start only. So from now on, when we press the front shutter button, it will only start to meter and take our pictures, but it won't attempt to focus. So next, I need the ability to focus in the spot autofocusing mode in the normal autofocus mode. How do I do that? Personally, I decided I want to assign that to the AF on button, but you can basically assign it to whichever button you want. So I went to AF on and I selected metering start and autofocus start for the AF on button. So now when I press the AF on button, the camera focuses. And if I press the front shutter button, it takes images. Now I still don't have animal eye detection autofocus. How can I get it? Well, I go back to the menu, I go to the star button, and for the star button in this menu, I can assign to activate eye detection autofocus. So now I've set up the camera in a way that when I press AF on, it focuses in the normal autofocus mode. And the moment I press the star button, the camera now activates animal eye detection autofocus. Why is this so amazing? Because in the past, especially with multiple birds and only having animal eye detection activated, I kind of struggled to tell the camera what exactly to focus on. If I focused on one bird, it might still grab another bird that I didn't actually want to focus on. And often it was kind of difficult to get the camera to actually focus on the bird that I wanted to focus on. So what I do now, I use the normal autofocusing mode with the spot autofocus and pre-focus on the bird that I want to focus on. And the moment I focus on the bird that I want to focus on, I activate animal eye detection autofocus. And in 99% of the cases, the camera then will jump on the bird you pre-focused on and then detect the eye and stay on the eye and stay on that bird at all times. So now I really managed to get the best of both worlds. And I think this is very important when using this camera. So let's finish up our autofocus settings. Go back to the pink autofocus menu. And there's a couple more things in that menu. What you don't wanna use is the continuous autofocus. If you turn that on, the camera continuously tries to focus on something and usually ends up just focusing on the background. So for birds, I found that to be a really useless feature. So I definitely turned that off. I also activated the touch and drag autofocus settings. And I selected the active touch area for the top right. So what does that do? Whenever I have my eye on the viewfinder now, I can use my thumb and move it around in this upper rear corner 
And that then moves the autofocus field to whatever point I want to move it to, which I found quite handy to use and actually easier to use than pressing the focus button and then moving the autofocus fields around with the joystick, for instance. That just takes a little bit longer and having the ability to use it with the thumb with my eye on the viewfinder, I found quite good. And even if I don't use it, it doesn't hurt to have that activated because sometimes you might just think, oh, let's quickly move it around and then at least you have it activated and will help me out at certain points in time, I'm sure. And that brings us to the autofocus cases. With all cameras, it comes a little bit down to personal preference. I tried case two first and I just felt that focus was a little bit jumpy. If I had to describe the animal eye detection autofocus in general, I think it's already quite kind of jumpy and going around, going all over the place. So I really wanted to find a mode that calmed that down a little bit because it doesn't really focus on other things anyways. Once it's locked onto something, it stays on that bird or your subject. So there's really not the need for that focus to be like super aggressive. And I felt like if it's too aggressive, it would rather jump onto the bird's nostril, to the eye, to the ear, all around. So I really wanted to find a mode that kind of calmed that down a little bit and allowed me to just track with whatever I'd focused on. And so I ended up using AF case one, which I've used successfully in the past. And because I wanted to slow things down a little bit, I actually set the tracking sensitivity and the acceleration, deceleration, both to minus one. Setting both of these to minus one then allowed me to just nicely have a focus that's still fast, still accurate, but kind of felt a little bit calmer. I might trial a few of the different cases still to determine which one is the best ultimately, but so far I'm pretty happy with what I've set up. And I heard a bunch of Canon people recommend to use it in the auto function. So the camera just selects whichever mode it thinks is appropriate for what you're shooting. But again, with the auto modes, I'm always a bit scared that it might select the wrong thing at the wrong point in time. So I might give it a go, but for now, I think I'll stick with the AF case one and both settings set to minus one. So making these few changes in the autofocus menu really make a dramatic difference to how this camera can be used and how useful it is for you as well. Especially having both autofocus modes available whenever you need them made the biggest change to me. I would highly recommend for you to look into that and find a way for you to do the same. In the blue menu, the only thing I changed was the magnification because I like to jump straight to 100% so I can quickly check the sharpness on my photos with just one press of a button. And the other thing I enabled in that blue menu is the highlights alert because I find it very helpful that sometimes you can see on the back of the camera if something is overexposed, even if it doesn't properly show on the histogram so you can see maybe the bird's neck a bit overexposed or there's certain areas in the background you may have missed that are now overexposed so having that blinking warning on is always quite helpful let's go on to the next menu we skip the purple menu there's really not much to do in there but you can use the wi-fi for instance to connect this camera to your phone via the canon app that can be pretty handy at times so if you want to do some remote shooting that brings us to the yellow menu and in the yellow menu also didn't change much but I did change something in the power saving settings. So I think that's pretty important because the camera in standby mode drains the batteries a lot and also kills off your video features over time. I think it's important that you set the camera to be turning off the viewfinder and everything pretty frequently. So whenever you're not using a camera, it goes into like a sleep mode. So in the power settings, I set display off to 30 seconds, auto power off to 30 seconds and the viewfinder off to one minute. And that way, whenever I don't touch the camera, it quickly turns itself off. So I don't accidentally have it sitting somewhere for 10 minutes, killing off all the video features while I wait for something else. In this menu, you can also change things like the brightness of your screen, brightness of your viewfinder, but I found the standard settings were pretty good. In this menu, you can also assign your custom modes for photo shooting. In the past, Canon always only had three custom modes that you could assign things to, but now they have three custom modes for photo and three custom modes for video, but you can't assign video to the custom photo mode. So I ended up 
not assigning anything to the custom photo modes. But this could be handy, for instance, if you want to assign like a long exposure setting to a custom mode, then you don't have to change these settings in your camera every time you're shooting. You can just swap between the two different modes. How do you assign a setting there? You set up your camera exactly in the way that you would want to have it when you're turning onto that custom mode. For instance, you set your exposure to 30 seconds, ISO 100, F11, whatever, and also set all the menu items to whichever way you want them. And then in here, you go custom modes and then you go register settings and just select to which custom mode you want to register them to. And then once they're registered, you can now go back into your manual mode, for instance. And whenever you go onto the C1 mode, then the settings you've registered will instantly be displayed. That brings us to the custom functions menu. And finally, one of you told me how I can change from photo mode into standby video mode. And there's only one button you can do this with, and that's the MFN button up there, the manual functions button. And that button you can almost assign anything to. Most of these other buttons have a quite restrictive usage, whereas if you go into your custom controls and go to the customize buttons, you see there is endless amounts of things you can assign to that button. Right way down somewhere was switch from still to movies and back. And that's exactly what I wanted. Now I can switch from being in manual mode. I press that button up here and go to whichever video mode I pre-selected and go to the standby of that video mode. So then on that standby video mode, I can quickly adjust the settings to whatever I need them to be on that day and then start shooting video. And if I press that button again, I'm back to shooting photos. So that will really speed up the process in the field and will really help me to get those precious videos and precious photos in a short amount of time. So now I just quickly want to go through some of the things I've set up for the video mode. For that, let me jump into video mode with the press of just one button. And in the video mode, I haven't actually made too many changes. And if you look through the video menu, you will see that most of the things are actually similar. But what I wanted to do is assign difficult to pick video modes to the C1 to 3 video custom modes. There's a few video functions like 4K high quality or 4K 120 frames per second that you have to select in the menu and you have to select like three or four things to actually get to that. So I can avoid all that simply by assigning, for instance, 4K high quality to custom mode 3. So I set up the camera, I select 4K, 30 frames per second, high quality. I set my shutter speed to 160, put my ISO to maybe like 200, aperture to like F8. And then I go into do custom shooting mode and I register those settings to custom mode three. So now whenever I jump between photo and video, I already have my video settings dialed in pretty much. So that will help me tremendously. And then I've also assigned 4K 120 to custom mode two, with like 120 frames per second, 2 50th of a second as my shutter speed, ISO 200 and F8 again. I don't really know which exact settings I will be using, but dialing in the base settings will definitely help me to make those adjustments really quickly in the field. And then the first mode I assigned 4K 30 frames per second with the 1.6 crop mode in case I want to film something that's a little bit further away. And I think that mode also doesn't overheat, so that should help me to be able to film a lot whenever I need to. And what I also turn on in the rear for the video is the zebras, simply because then they show me if I'm underexposing too much, I'm overexposing too much. And you just have to play around with the percentages on the back there a little bit, because if you have it too high or too low, then you might not see enough, or you have the zebras on it like all times, which can be annoying as well when you're filming. So you just have to figure out what the right settings are there for you. The only other thing you might want to think about as well in the video mode is whether you want to activate analog for shooting to get those really flat files with good dynamic range or just use like a neutral picture style to get a decent file with the contrast edit in already. That's just up to you and your personal preference and also down to your video workflow. Setting up a new camera like this can be a pretty daunting task and 
It took quite a while for me as well to just go through all the settings and kind of see how they affected my work in the field, but I'm pretty happy with how I have set up the camera now and I really hope that seeing how I've set up might give you an indication and some ideas how you can set up your camera to get the absolute most out of it. I really think using back button focus or actually double back button autofocusing on this camera makes a real big difference and makes it so much nicer to use. So hopefully this helped you out and if you're interested in more bird photography and improving your bird photography and taking it to that next level, make sure that you check out my ebooks and videos down there in the description. I know they will help you a lot. So let me know in the comments, how have you set up your R5? Have you actually gotten your R5 yet? Are you planning on getting one? Have you found any settings that I should definitely check out? Please let me know in the comments. Also let me know if you have any questions about settings that I haven't mentioned today. I'm more than happy to help you out with those. So let me know in the comments. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and I will see you very soon with another video.